at the CBS Evening News, we focus on solutions, finding solutions to help people understand what are the right choices to make for you and your family. Now on Channel 3 and streaming on WFSB Plus, this is Eyewitness News at 11. Election night 2023. The votes are being tallied as cities and towns choose their next leaders. I think we need to exercise our right to vote. Tonight, we have team coverage on the big victories. And so many of you have shared with me your hopes and dreams for the city. We did! Yeah. And the races that are clouded in controversy. We are your election authority. First up right now, we start tonight with campaign 2023 on this big election night. Some big races being decided all across the state, and we have it all covered. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Sidney. And hi, everyone. I'm Erin Connolly. We have team coverage at 11 with Eyewitness News crews covering the top races for mayor, including in Hartford, Waterbury, and New Haven. And one of the biggest and most controversial races was in Bridgeport. But tonight, Mayor Joe Ganim's future is uncertain, with his challenger optimistic about the outcome. We we begin our coverage in Bridgeport with chief political reporter Susan Raff. She is at John Gomes's headquarters. Susan. Good evening. It is very important to point out that this race has not been called. The official results are not in yet. In fact, the registrar of voters said earlier that this could be a long night counting these votes. But independent candidate John Gomes is very I would say he's feeling pretty good about this evening, and he's here live with us. You had said earlier tonight that you were cautiously optimistic. Yes, that's a term that I used during September uh, election as well as tonight. You used a number. You said that you believe you're up by 564 votes. That's not a lot. Right. Uh, based on the tabulations that we had on the polls uh, at the closing, we're up by 564 votes. What happens next? You had mentioned that if you won tonight, there would not be a need for a new primary. But it might be up to the courts to make that decision. Correct. I mean, based on... Uh, uh, advice from our legal counsel, uh, Attorney Bloss, uh, that is an option, that uh, we withdraw our case on the court and hopefully with the judge rendering a decision or a verdict in our favor to uh, close the case. And for many of our viewers who have seen this video that surfaced of the Ganem supporters stuffing ballots into a drop box, do you think that had any impact on tonight's results for this election? I think so. I think the voters more than ever felt disenfranchised, felt disrespected, obviously feel that their votes were suppressed and their civil rights were violated. And it takes a lot to get them back in the polls. And we did the best we can. Well, we're going to have to wait and see the results, but independent candidate John Gomes, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for the time. So we wait and see in what the results are going to be, but as you heard, John Gomes is optimistic. What will happen next? Will there be a primary? We'll just have to wait and see. For now, we are live in Bridgeport. Susan Raff, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. A lot more to come. Susan, thank you very much. Also, Mayor Joe Ganim speaking out earlier tonight, saying it is not over until it's over. Channel 3's Hector Molina continues our team coverage in Bridgeport tonight. Hector. We're still here at Ganem's party here at Tap and Tavern, but the mayoral candidate is not. Ganem and his campaign party have left for the night. They say they know this is going to be a long process, and they're just going to go home and really let this all play out. At last check, Gomes still had the lead over Ganem by about 400 votes, but Ganem knows this is going to be a long process and that this race is far from over. The truth of the matter is, we don't know what happens after 8 o'clock tonight, regardless of what the results are. I mean, the order a new primary, um, whether you know, whatever, that's a court order that stands. So, you know, I think all of us are going to be looking at that tomorrow, regardless of whether someone's up or down by a number of votes. It could be a few votes one way or the other. It could be more. Um, so I think there's a little bit of... Now, absentee ballots still need to be counted. That was a very controversial part of this whole race, so definitely a number to keep a close eye on. That's the latest here in Bridgeport. Hector Molina, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. Our team coverage continues right now, heading to the city of Hartford, where they have also elected a new mayor here. Arunan Arulampalam declared victory tonight. Channel 3 Hartford Bureau Chief Aya Glal is live at Duncan Park with more on this race. Aya? 
Hi, Mark. Yeah, and it has been a night of celebration here at Duncan Park. The party isn't over yet, but it is winding down. Around 9 p.m. tonight, Arun and Arulumplum declared victory in the Hartford mayoral race. This is where he and his supporters gathered to watch those election results come in tonight. Now, Arun and Arulumplum was up against Republican Michael McGeary and a handful of petitioning candidates. We are still waiting on the official numbers to come in, but Arun and had a number of key endorsements in this race and also had won the Democratic primary back in September. Arunan currently serves as the CEO of the Hartford Land Bank. I asked what his priorities are once his term begins, and here's what he had to say. Well, we've got a lot on the to-do list, um, but we're going to build a team that's just as diverse and vibrant as the city, and then we're going to get to work. We're going we're to try to bring as many voices as we, as we can into this transition effort, uh, and then get to work at City Hall and de delivering on our promises of building real investment across the city and across every neighborhood, of investing in our children and creating safe spaces. We've got a lot of work to do, but I'm ready. And tomorrow, Arunan will announce his mayoral transition team. Live in Hartford tonight, Aya Galen, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. All right, Aya, thank you. Heading to Waterbury right now, where the city there is getting its first new mayor in more than a decade. Democrat Paul Pernaruski declared victory. Channel 3, Eyewitness News reporter Dylan Fearon is live in Waterbury tonight with more on what is a very tight race. Dylan. <laughs> Yeah, Aaron Mark, good evening. It was very tight as the victory party here has cleared out, the campaign now cleaning up. But yeah, this race was much tighter than Punaruski expected going into this race. Unofficial results show he won by about 600 votes over Myrano. Punaruski, the favorite heading into today. And he said, Dylan, look, you win by one vote, 600 votes, 6,000 votes. I'm happy with it. He said Myrano called him earlier tonight congratulating him. He also says he hopes to work with her in the future on top city issues like crime, economic development, and education. I didn't expect it to be so tight after poll standing today. It felt better than, it, than the numbers that came in, but it was an open seat the first time really in over 12 years we've had an open seat in the city of Waterbury, so it's to be expected that you know there was a big push. They ran a really good campaign, the Republicans as well. Uh, I think the best campaign they've run in a number of years, so it's, it, I think it was all to be expected. Another key part of this race, Mark and Aaron, voter turnout lower than expected. About 22% of registered voter, voters in the brass city came out and voted today. Live in Waterbury, I'm Dylan Fear in Channel 3 Eyewitness News. All right, Dylan, thank you. Heading to the Elm City right now, two more years for New Haven Mayor Justin Elliker. He easily won a third term, beating challengers Tom Goldenberg and petitioning candidate Wendy Hamilton. Channel 3 New Haven Bureau Chief Matt McFarland covering this race now for weeks. He's joining us from Elliker's campaign party outside of it there. Hi, Matt. Now, hi there, Mark. A big night for Justin Elliker and his supporters. The early numbers coming back with nearly 80% of the vote, but it was an actually an early night here in the Elm City, one without much suspense with Elliker walking into his election night party victorious uh, shortly after 8.30 this evening. Elliker cruised to a therm tur, taking every ward, easily beating those two challengers, Tom Goldenberg, a Democrat who ran on the Republican Party line, along with petitioning candidate Wendy Hamilton. And he says tonight's results speak for themselves. It just shows that New Haven residents overwhelmingly think we're going in the right direction. You know, and we're never shy about saying we got our challenges, but people recognize just how much progress we made. And also tonight, nearly two-thirds of New Haven voters voting yes on a big ballot question, a charter revision, which means starting in 2027, the terms for mayor, board of alders, and the city clerk will shift from two-year terms to four-year terms. We're live with the Mobile Newsroom in New Haven. Matt McFarland, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. Matt, thank you. Of course, we're covering some other big races tonight as well, including in New Britain, where Mayor Aaron Stewart has won another term, a sixth term. We will have a lot more on that coming up. And of course, we will continue to monitor the latest developments in Bridgeport. All right, if you were in central or eastern Connecticut over the past several hours, perhaps you encountered a brief shower or a downpour. That's all in association with a cold front that has been moving through southern New England, and in its wake, cooler air is already beginning to move across Connecticut. So we're transitioning from the 50s and the 40s. Even cooler air or northwest will continue uh, filtering in our direction. Overnight tonight by early tomorrow, we'll bottom out in the uh, 30s statewide, low and mid-30s inland, and upper 30s along the shoreline. But it is going to be 
breezy. That wind is going to make these 30 degree temps feel more like the 20. So with a bus ride uh, into school tomorrow, we'll have plenty of sunshine, uh, but dress accordingly. You'll need that extra layer, uh, a thicker coat for sure, a warm one. By the afternoon, we top out between 45 and 50. And as the day progresses, especially as we head toward sunset tomorrow, we'll start to see an increase in cloud cover. That's in association with our next storm system, first alerting you to some rain that could also include some pellets of sleet. That's ahead in the first alert seven day. Mark, thank you very much. We're also following some developing news out of New Haven. Police are investigating after shots were fired at the intersection of Reed and Shepherd Streets earlier tonight. There's no word yet on if anyone is hurt or if a suspect is in custody. We are working to learn more details right now and we'll keep you updated. There is still much more ahead for you on this election night, including an abortion rights battle that could have a big impact on the presidential race next year. Also ahead, we're on top of some more big races here in Connecticut, including in Derby where the incumbent mayor has been unseated in a race that has drawn national attention. Eyewitness News is your election authority. We will be back with more right after this. When it comes to your health, you do you. You ping and pong that body. You plunge that body. You green that body. You brain power that body. You practice and practice that body. You make it rain that body. You flu shot that body. And now you spike vax that body. Because even though the pandemic is over, COVID-19 isn't. Spike vax by Moderna is a vaccine to help protect you against COVID-19. You shouldn't get spike vax if you've had an allergic reaction to spike vax or its ingredients. Rare cases of inflammation of the heart, muscle, and outer lining have been reported. The most common side effects are injection site pain, redness and swelling, tiredness, headache, muscle pain, chills, joint pain, and fever. Make vaccination against COVID-19 a part of your health routine. Spike Vax That Body with Spike Vax by Moderna. The events, the exhibits, and all the fun. Channel 3 has your tickets to the Connecticut Science Center. Enter on Facebook to win a family four-pack of tickets or the grand prize of a yearly membership. We'll announce our next winner tomorrow at 3 on Great Day Connecticut. Getting ready for work or school every morning, I've got your first alert to trouble on the roads. Be morning ready with First Alert Traffic, driven by your Connecticut Chevy dealers. You're the people who make junk disappear? We brought a whole truckload of magic. <laughs> what is that junk? I love you. We make junk disappear. All you have to do is point. All Tomorrow, I've got your first alert to crashes and alternate routes. Be morning ready with first alert traffic, driven by your Connecticut Chevy dealers. You're watching Eyewitness News at 11 with Aaron Connolly, Mark Zenni, and first alert chief meteorologist Mark Dixon. Connecticut's number one local news. Eyewitness News continues. Our team coverage continues right now at 11 with more races for mayor, including one that has gotten some national attention. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Eliza Krasinski is at the election desk with more. Eliza. Erin, just into the newsroom, we're learning the race for mayor in Derby and New Britain have been called. Democrat Joseph DiMartino is the winner of tonight's mayoral election. Incumbent Mayor Richard Zekin fell behind, as well as Republican Gino DiGiovanni Jr. DiGiovanni faces charges for being involved in the January 6th insurrection. We are waiting to hear back. Uh, actually, I did just speak with DiMartino on his win. He says he is feeling good. People came out and made a statement that they want change. He says that the first thing that he will do is in office is a forensic audit on all of the books and then hiring full-time finance director and a tax collector as well. Now we have also confirmed Mayor Erin Stewart will serve a sixth term as New Britain mayor. She beat Democrat Chris Anderson roughly 4,500 to 2,800 votes. She first became mayor 10 years ago. I also did just catch up with her on the phone about 20 minutes ago and she says she's feeling good. This is a big victory and referendum on the work that they are doing. She's looking forward to working with new people and is excited 
excited to be able to see through the current projects that they have already. Uh, and she's happy voters are giving her the opportunity to continue to serve New Britain. Now stay up to date with all of the races across the state as the numbers continue to come in on WFSB.com. Live in the newsroom, Eliza Krasinski, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. All right, Eliza, thank you. Our team coverage continues right now. Certainly a lot going on in politics in Connecticut tonight. And joining us to talk more about it is Dan Haar, the senior editor and columnist at Hearst Connecticut Media. Dan, thanks for being here. Great to be here. What do you think is driving voters tonight? This is really very strictly local stuff. And people talk about how the off years, the municipal years, I shouldn't say off years, the municipal years are bellwethers for national and state politics. And I'm skeptical of that because you go to West Hartford and they're talking about how many houses they're building and apartments. And you go to Fairfield and they're talking about the fight in the registrar's office. And you go to uh, Wallingford and they're talking about the high school consolidating the high school. It's really strictly local issues here. There are some in, there was a book banning issue that led to in Westport a, uh, a young woman by the name of Dylan who came in at the last minute as a write-in and took a seat because of, she opposed the book banning. So that's somewhat of a national issue but still on a local canvas. So it's really very local issues. In Danbury we saw really a personal fight between Alves who flipped that seat from Esposito, Mayor Esposito. Uh, they got nasty. Well, look what we're seeing now in Bridgeport. So John Gomes, uh, very optimistic about uh, the way things are looking right now. What do you think? How will this play out? Well, John Gomes is going to win tonight, and that's going to be meaningless. He's going to, uh, his, his attorney, Bill Bloss, has already said that he's going to go back to the court after this election if they win and say, oh, never mind about the appeal. We don't care about that primary. But the primary is already baked in. It's already a decision. I don't think you can undo it. The state Supreme Court said four years ago you have to have a valid primary before you have a general election. So I think Ganim is going to win the appeal. He, of course, lost tonight. But it's like the Cincinnati Bengals playing the Kansas City Chiefs in 21 before or the national, the, the playoffs in the regular season, psychological only. All right, quickly, Derby, I have to ask you, are there some Republicans you think that are happy with the outcome that a Democrat won? Absolutely. I don't think there's any question that, why does Mayor Zekin run after he loses the primary? He knows he doesn't want Di Giovanni to win. If he doesn't win, if he doesn't run, maybe Di Giovanni wins all of those Republican votes and becomes the next mayor. All right, Dan Hart, thank you very much. Great to be Good here. Good to see you tonight. Thank you. Well, it is the last major election day before the 2024 presidential primaries kick into high gear and campaigns will be looking to some bellwether states for clues tonight. Dan was just talking about this in Ohio. Voters passed an amendment to the state constitution that guarantees women have the right to an abortion. The decision offers a look at how reproductive rights are motivating the current electorate. And two governor's races are testing Democratic medal in red states. In Kentucky, incumbent Democrat Andy Beshear was re-elected to a second term, overcoming that state's GOP dominance. In Mississippi, Democrat Brandon Presley aims to unseat Republican incumbent Tate Reeves. Our election coverage continues in just a moment. We'll keep bringing you election results on air and online. And don't forget, now is a great time to download and follow the results on the WFSB app. All right, earlier today, temperatures peaked well into the mid and even upper 60s in some spots. A big change is on tap for tomorrow, as we've been first alerting you. Uh, it's going to be dramatically cooler with a breeze that will make it feel even chillier. Then for Thursday, we've got the potential for a light wintry mix that goes over to some rain. Otherwise, our forecast for the upcoming weekend remains dry, but chilly for both Saturday and Sunday with a lot of sunshine. Right now, we are still holding on to the 50s along the shoreline, as warm as 56 in New Haven, 52 Hartford. We've got mid 40s already in the northwestern hill towns, and this northwesterly wind will continue to send cooler air in our direction. Currently, winds are sustained between 5 and 10, 10 to 15 miles an hour. Occasionally, we're getting some gusts up to around 20 miles an hour, but it is that wind direction that will content continue sending that cooler air in the Connecticut. So from our eye can view in Hartford, great visibility and nice scene also coming in from the Elm City of New Haven. And First Alert Live Radar, the only live radar in Connecticut, it is scanning dry after tracking earlier this this evening, some showers and downpours in association this with this cold front that's been pushing through the region. You can see a lot of that kind of flaring up as that front now is offshore from southern New England. So tonight we'll see a mainly clear sky. Uh, high pressure briefly builds in for tomorrow. Uh, and as the day progresses, the wind will start to subside just a bit. But our next area of low pressure that we're tracking, moving through the Plain States, it's going to swing up in our direction and bring that uh, chance for perhaps a little sleet come early Thursday morning. 
morning. So uh, as we check out uh, our hour-by-hour hour forecast through tonight, temperatures going through the 40s, eventually into the 30s uh, across Connecticut. But when you factor the wind in tomorrow morning, as the air temperature statewide will be in the 30s, it will feel at times when the wind is up more like the 20s. So certainly want to dress accordingly as you start your Wednesday. And on the wind gust trend for tomorrow, initially gusts around 20 miles an hour, nothing too terribly strong. We're not talking about power outages, but as the day moves forward in time, uh, the wind will start to relax a bit. And first alert, future cast throughout the day tomorrow, plenty of sunshine when we wake up. And then during the uh, later afternoon hours, as we head toward and past sunset, we'll start to see an increase in cloud cover. So it could make for some nice sunset uh, pictures tomorrow evening. Temps tomorrow only reach the mid and upper 40s inland and near 50 along the shrine. So roughly 20 degrees cooler than where we saw high temperatures peak today. So again, there's that big change for it. And as we look at the big picture here, taking you from tomorrow evening into early Thursday, that next area of low pressure is going to be moving into the northeast. Uh, so the latest model trends here, keeping any sort of that wintry mix just to our north, still across the higher terrain of far northern Connecticut, there's going to be that possibility for perhaps a little wintry mix, again, a little sleet to mix in with some rain. Otherwise, scattered rain showers through Thursday, tapering off as we head by the, uh, by the evening commute time. We could actually see uh, some partial clearing before the sun sets. So for Friday, mostly cloudy. Temperatures top out uh, between 50 and 55 for the upcoming weekend. Close to 50 for a high on Saturday. Mid and upper 40s on Sunday. Even chillier weather for Monday of next week. And once we get past Thursday, the weekend and beyond looking dry and bright. I also want to point out for Thursday, quite a spread in temperature here. Inland temperatures top out in the low and mid 40s. Meanwhile, southern coastal Connecticut reaching well into the low and mid 50s. Mark, thank you very much. Still ahead tonight at 11, a Jewish man is dead after Israeli and Palestinian protesters clash in Southern California. What we're learning about the possible hate crime charges that could be coming in the case. And we are following the very latest developments on this election night. We are your election authority, and we'll be right back. alert weather is all about you. Periods of rain, a little bit of a breeze. Trust Chief Meteorologist Mark Dixon and the state's largest weather team. Tracking severe storms with Connecticut's only live first alert radar. Have your showers at East Hartford and Manchester. Keeping you ahead of changes to your plans days in advance. Have a tent if you have an outdoor activity. Every screen, everywhere you go. Heavy rain, it is going to continue. First to see it, first to track it, first for you. This is why we first alert. At Cox Mobile, we know that every family has different needs. That's why the more gig unlimited lines you add, the more everyone saves. Well, almost everyone. Now, when you switch to Cox Mobile, you'll pay as low as $30 per line when you add four or more gig unlimited lines. And it's all on the network with unbeatable 5G reliability. With no annual contract, visit us today to get started and bring the crew to. Select new Volvo models. Contact your Volvo retailer to learn more. Dear men, if you find yourself always having to go, 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 or if you're not 100% down there, don't just stand there. These can be signs of serious health issues like an enlarged prostate or cardiovascular disease. So, go, go, go. Get yourself checked out. At Hartford HealthCare's Tallwood Men's Health. Big Y. Rack up points. Stack up savings. It's my Big Y Rewards. Welcome back. Developing news from Washington, D.C., where a man with a rifle was arrested in a park near the U.S. Capitol. The suspect, who is from Atlanta, was arrested after Capitol Police got a call about a man with a gun. In a news conference, police said the gun appeared to be a semi-automatic weapon that looks similar to an AR-15. 
Authorities in California now investigating what led to the death of a Jewish man following protests over the weekend. 69-year-old Paul Kessler was killed in the altercation with a pro-Palestinian protester. It happened in Thousand Oaks. He was knocked down and hit his head on the cement. His death has been ruled a homicide. The suspect is cooperating. Investigators say they have not ruled out the possibility of a hate crime. We're still waiting to see evidence of what occurred in that interaction and whether or not there was a blow to the face that caused the fall. Police have increased patrols around Jewish houses of worship as well as mosques and Muslim community centers. Back here at home, a Connecticut man is facing voyeurism charges accused of bad behavior at the happiest place on earth. Police say 22-year-old Clayton Snyder of New Haven was filming a young boy inside a bathroom at a Disney resort. The 10-year-old told his parents he saw a phone over the bathroom divider at the Grand Floridian. The boy's father confronted Snyder while his mom called police. Hartford police made a second arrest after a 17-year-old girl was shot and killed over the summer. Investigators believe 29-year-old Alexa Orta died, uh, tried to rob an apartment on Maple Avenue in July when gunfire was exchanged between him and someone inside. Several people were shot and two people died, including a 17-year-old, Alondra Vega Martinez. Orta is now facing charges including murder, home invasion, and unlawful restraint. Right as we look ahead to the weekend on a Tuesday night, for now, looking dry and bright for both days. We'll say mostly sunny Saturday. Temperatures top out within a degree or two of 50. Sunday looking a little bit chillier. And, of course, Saturday is Veterans Day, so wherever your plants may take you, we're looking good. Again, you'll need the sunglasses both Saturday and Sunday. High Sunday in the mid and upper 40s. Of course, the WFSB weather app, a great resource as well before the weekend to track a little rain that could include some sleep tomorrow night into early Thursday morning. Mark, thank you. Still ahead tonight at 11. The latest results and more news on this election night. Yes, that's coming up right after the break. But first, here's a look at what's coming up next on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Our promise to our clients is that we are going to do everything humanly possible to make things right for them. Call the Flood Law Firm at 877-987-9LAW or visit thefloodlawfirm.com. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. Plus America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Get 0% APR for 60 months, plus zero payments for 90 days on the Hyundai Tucson. Now, during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Tony, your parents know you're over here again, right? Yep. Great. Tony lives next door. See, his parents decided to just use their phone for home internet. So when everyone is on, Tony's over here streaming. And drinking on my soda. My dog. Get internet on the Next Generation Xfinity 10G network for $25 a month for 12 months with no annual contract. We're going to bed, Tony. Good night. I'll lock up if I leave. Get real home internet on the Next Generation 10G network only from Xfinity. His team did an excellent job of communicating what was going on. They um, took on the weight that my father really didn't know what to do. Eric had my best interest at heart. If you've been injured through no fault of your own, call the Flood Law Firm today. Breaking news, first alert weather, and cold hard cash. The $1,000 a day giveaway on Eyewitness News. Watch for the Cash Clue weekday starting at 4 and enter on Facebook. We'll announce a $500 winner at 5 and another at 6. Only on Eyewitness News. Dear first place, how do you get to the top? Just keep on climbing. Yours, Tacoma. Get a great deal on a new 2023 Tacoma. A KBB Best Buy. Toyota. Let's go places. Hurry up. We're going to miss first chair. This one next? Yeah. We're going to be late. Has anyone seen my old ski suit? Just wear the new one. I don't want to wear the new one. Ready? Yeah. 
Dad's in your car, right? No, I thought he was with you. Dad! Who's ready to shred some pow? Flora. Don't forget, the BMW Road Home sales event is on now. Hurry in for credit of up to $3,000 on select models now through November 30th. I was a rider before I became an attorney. I know firsthand the dangers bikers face every day. Road hazards or careless drivers and the serious injuries that can happen when you're involved in a motorcycle accident. That's why I'm so passionate about helping injured riders get justice. So if you're hurt in a motorcycle accident, don't try to fight the insurance company with just any lawyer. You need to get a lawyer who rides and one who knows motorcycles. You need to get Carter. Dear Exit Strategy, all your pieces are in place. Always Toyota SUVs. Get a great deal on Highlander with the assurance that Toyota is a KBB most trusted brand. Toyota, let's go places. Time and temperature sponsored by Aetna Medicare Solutions. Medicare annual enrollment ends December 7th. All right, let's get back to our coverage of this election night. Yeah, before you head off to bed, we want to run through some of the big races that we've been following tonight, starting in Bridgeport. Still officially right now, no winner, but John Gomes is out on top. He said he is cautiously optimistic against uh, current Mayor Joe Gannum. Of course, this is far from over tonight because it's heading back to court and almost certainly back to the ballot box again. So we'll be learning a lot more about this tomorrow. We are also following breaking news from Middletown tonight. That's where incumbent Ben Florsheim has won another term, defeating Republican Mike Marino with 65% of the vote. And in Hartford, Arunan Arulampalam declared victory. He was endorsed by outgoing Mayor Luke Bronin. Uh, he decided not to run for re-election, but again, Arunan coming out on top with a vast majority of the votes tonight. And to Waterbury, where there will be a new mayor for the first time in 12 years. Democrat Paul Pernaruski has declared victory over Republican Don Majorano, and it was a very, very close race in that city. Yes, and heading to New Haven right now, Justin Elliker uh, secured another term as well, easily winning tonight another two-year term. Now, in addition to mayoral elections, voters in cities and towns also deciding some big ballot issues that could reshape their local communities. In Simsbury, for example, they're deciding if recreational marijuana will be allowed to be sold in town. If approved, dispensaries would be able to set up shop. And in Norwich, voters will decide if the city should build a new police station. The current bill building is outdated and in need of major upgrades. If voters agree to it, $44 million will be spent on a new building. A location has yet to be determined. And of course, a lot of this continues to come in right now, and it will throughout the night tonight. And we put it right on the WFSB app, so you can download that and check for the latest overnight. And how are we looking overnight? Real oh, it's going to be chilly. Yeah. Well, wind chills tomorrow morning in the 20s, so brace for that. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us tonight for the news here at 11. Have a great night, everyone. We will see you back here tomorrow.